Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare these five Asus mesh systems to each other. We're gonna talk about their specs, ports, speed tests, range tests, have all those numbers here. I've retested with the following devices with their latest firmwares in the same exact environments. And in addition, we'll talk about their Asus app. There are a few key minor differences, but essentially I'll use the same app. And in the end, I'll tell you guys my opinion on which one is worth getting for which specific scenario, because all of these are really good right off the bat. Let's start with the XD5. All of these ASUS mesh systems in this test support parental controls, uh, which are included in the price. They offer AI protection, they offer AI mesh. You can actually mix and match these if you wanted to. And they offer a ton of options, more options than any mesh system or router that I've tested. So we'll start with the XT5. This is a dual band Wi-Fi 6 system with two ethernet ports of which each support up to gigabit speeds. So we have the WAN port and when we have the LAN port. So the internet source would go to the WAN port, so your modem would connect here, or ONT or DSL, or whatever your internet source would connect here, and out it would come from the LAN port. It could go to the other XD5. If you wanted to go do a wired backhaul, it could go to an unmanaged switch to get more ethernet ports. You could go to a computer or a PlayStation or whatever that requires ethernet. So you do have those options. In fact, I made a whole setup guide video on this where I go into this into great detail, demoing this stuff. So if you guys are interested, links below. Okay, we have a power port. You can actually wall mount this. We have a WPS button and a factory reset, and this is what it looks like. And the XT5 comes in at a three pack. Next, we have the ASUS ET8, which is actually a tri-band Wi-Fi 6E mesh system. So in addition to the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz that the XT5 has, this has an additional six gigahertz band for Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 devices. And then we have a USB 3.0 port, so you can actually hook up a hard drive to this and share it among your network. Even between a Mac and a Windows PC, you can actually do that. Now, don't expect crazy fast speeds from that, just as a heads up. If you want something like that, you want to get a dedicated NAS, a network attached storage, like a Synology or something like that, which I've reviewed that as well. Okay, so the other thing is the WAN port on this can actually support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. However, these three other ports are gigabit ports. So let's say for instance, if you have two gigabit internet speeds, it can go in at this, but as soon as it comes out of here, it's actually being capped to gigabit speeds and the speed test will show that. Then we have a power switch and then we have the power port right here. And on the bottom, we have a WPS and the reset switch, and this is what it looks like. Okay, next comes the XT9, which is essentially identical to the ET8 in terms of ports, but it's a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. So instead of having a 2.45 and a 6 gigahertz band, this one has a 2.4 and 2 5 gigahertz bands. And it also has a slightly faster speed rating, but as aside from that, everything else is pretty much identical between these. In fact, I actually have to look on the bottom to, to see which one I'm actually looking at because they're so identical. The GT6 is also pretty much the same in terms of the XT9 in terms of ports. I mean, it's placed a little differently, but it's basically the same thing. And on the bottom, we have, you know, the WPS and the reset button, but the the GT6 is very similar to the XT9 because it's a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 system, except it has slightly faster speed rating of AX10,000. And in addition to that, it looks way cooler. And this this ASUS sign, this their rogue lights up, and you can actually change the colors in the app. So. In the same app, you actually get additional options of changing the aura RGB of this. You can make it a static, you can make it breathe. There's a few patterns it can do and stuff. And in fact, I went to that into great detail in the independent, independent review of this where I was doing that. But essentially, coolness-wise, this looks very cool compared to the X-T9. And speaking of cool, we get to the ET12 Pro. Now, this is also a tri-band system, but this one, just like the ET8, is actually a Wi-Fi 6C system. So again, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and a 6 gigahertz band. It also has the fastest speed rating from all of these at AXC 11,000. It has four Ethernet ports, and there's something very special about this because two of the four support up to 2.5 gigabit internet speed. So <clears throat> when it comes in at 2.5, it can actually go out at 2.5, so you're not losing speeds. The other two are gigabit ports, so if you were coming out of this, you would lose speeds. We have the WPS reset off and on, 
and the power port, nothing on the bottom, and this looks like a skyscraper. This one also has a very cool design. In fact, this is one of my favorite designs from any mesh system that I've tested. This lights up. There is some um, basically white LED light, and then the top also lights up. The ASUS sign right there lights up as well. Now we get to the power supplies. This is for the XT5. It is 100 to 240 volts. In fact, all the power supplies are 100 to 240 volts. But this one is outputting at 18 watts. It's the least power from all of them. And then we have the ASUS ET8, which is 33 watts of power. And then we have the ASUS XT9, which is 36 watts of power. And then we have the GT6 and ET12 Pro actually use the same exact power supplies. And they are up to 45 watts of power. Now we jump into the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast any mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course the router itself is limiting those speeds, which in my case, all of these are actually are because my internet speeds are five gigabits upload and download. And the fastest ports on these four are actually up to 2.5 gigabits. This one's actually capped to gigabit. So I'm automatically being capped to that. And in addition, these three, as soon as I come out of them to go to my computer, these three actually also cap me to gigabit speed. So really, as far as internet speed tests via Ethernet on my computer, this one can get me to 2.5 gigabits. The rest of these are actually capping me to gigabit speeds. Um, with the difference is that these three, I can actually go faster if I'm on Wi-Fi near the main router and I'm doing a Wi-Fi speed test on it, then I could in theory go faster than gigabit. So, Looking at the numbers for the Wi-Fi devices, obviously with the XT5, I'm being capped at just under gigabit speeds. With the ET8, actually got the fastest Wi-Fi 7 download speeds. Now, none of these are Wi-Fi 7 um, routers. However, typically Wi-Fi 60 and Wi-Fi 7 devices do a little bit better even on Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 60 devices. So as you guys can see, ET8 did take the cake for the download speeds, but for the most part, the ET8, XT9, and GT6 had very similar speeds, both for Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, ET12 was not too far off in the download section, but in the upload section, it did suffer compared to the ET8, XT9, and GT6. Next, we'll get into the local speed test. Now, this is when you find out the true performance of the mesh system because what you're doing is I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the router, which then goes to the server. So this way I isolate this, I get rid of my ISP, which is my internet service provider and the public speed test server, which is pretty much can be pretty busy at times. So looking at the results for these local speed tests, it looks like in most cases they improved where the XT5 was capped to just under gigabit speeds and the rest, you know, did better in most cases. So with the XT9 taking the cake for a Wi-Fi 7 download speed and the ET12 taking the cake for a Wi-Fi 6E download speeds. But for the most part, the ET8, XT9, GT6, and ET12 were within the same ballpark, I would say. Then we move to wired backhaul. Now, th this is the biggest thing that I was talking about. The XT5 pretty much got the same speeds in the single router configuration as it did in the wired backhaul, but you'll notice that the ET8, XT9, and GT6 were just, all three were capped to just under gigabit speeds, and this is because all three of these only have a 2.1, 2.5 gigabit port where the port coming out when it goes to the other guy is actually going in at going out at gigabit. So you're actually automatically capping it and that's why we see this. Whereas with the ET12, we pretty much got the same download and upload speeds in the wired backhaul section as we did with the single router configuration because it actually has two fast ports. So this is really the biggest thing here. Then we get to wireless backhaul performance and right off the bat you can easily see that the XT5 is suffering in this category and that is because it's a dual band system with the slowest speed rating. So it can't quite keep up with the rest where the pretty much the GT6 and the XT9 are taking the cake really. ET8 and ET12 are not too far behind but XT5 is this is where you could see that dual band is not really good for wireless backhaul performance. Next, we get to range test. Now, range will vary vastly by location. So essentially, more obstructions you have, less range. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers and walls around, 
all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. Now, all of these are tested in the same area. So in my case, the results are relative to one another. At 20 feet away inside my place, they all did very well in terms of very little drop. Now, the X-T5 was slower than the rest, but because it started slower than the rest. So hardly a drop across the board. Uh, but GT6 technically did take the cake in all the cases. At 50 feet outside my place, you know, they're all still doing fairly well. All very, very usable speeds. But the ET12 is basically taking the cake for download speeds. And the GT6 is taking the cake for upload speeds. And at 100 feet away across the street, I'm actually getting... Honestly, I'm getting very good speeds for all of them. And what surprised me is that the X-T5 actually had, technically speaking, the fastest download speed in the Wi-Fi 7 section. So very impressed with that. But overall, again, it went to the GT6 and the ET12 Pro. And I'm actually capping my inner, my range test to 100 feet. I used to go a lot farther, but I just want to keep things very simple just to get to the point. So... Pretty much, this is all usable in my front and backyard. No matter which one I'm using, I'm going to get very good speeds throughout. So for setup and configuration, you use the Asus Router app. It's available both on iOS and on Android. And the Asus Router app has a ton of options. And if that's not enough, you can actually go to the default gateway on a web browser to give you even more options. And I think it's, there's also a name for it too. I think it's like asusrouter.com or something like that. Uh, but if you go to that, you get even way more options than what's in the app. So ridiculous. So you get the parental controls, you get the AI protections, you could do AI mesh setup, you can separate out the bands, you can have a separate 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz, you get VPN options, um, just uh, you can uh, set the transmit power, you can do a wireless schedule where you turn it off during certain times. So like just like literally an insane amount of options and there's way more than what I just said, like way more than that. And in addition to that, with the GT6 specifically, you can actually change the colors of this. Even within the Asus router app, you can actually set different static colors. You can set a like a breathing pattern or like a waveform. So there's some additional options with that, which I covered in the individual video of this. Uh, but there's, yeah, a lot of options. And then the GT6 also has like a game boost mode um, so that the rest don't have. Now, um, these do have QoS, so you could put gaming on top. So quality of service if you want to do that. But again, lots of options. All right. Now, to summarize, all of these are fantastic. So it really just depends on your situation. So right off the bat, the X-T5 is the perfect choice for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired backhaul. Uh, it's the cheapest in price and it delivers phenomenal performance, even actually phenomenal range for its price was just out of this world good. Now, if you're going to do wireless backhaul performance, I personally would not get the X-T5 and I would go from ET8 all the way up to this. And really wireless backhaul performance up to 2.5 gigs, you can actually get any one of these and it would be really, really good because all, especially these three because there is a jump in price to the ET12, but really these three were pretty close to each other in terms of wireless backhaul performance per price. Um, but the X-T9 is cheaper than the GT6, so technically... The X-T9 is a better way to go. And if the ET8 is available, um, the ET8 is also an option. So it really just depends which one of these three are cheaper. That's, or maybe on sale at the time, that's the one you want to get because all three of these performed very, very well. Now the GT6 has the cool factor to it where, you know, it looks the coolest in my opinion and you, you get to, you know, customize that. So it just... I don't know, it just looks cool. So if you're willing to spend a few extra bucks for the cool factor, I mean, it does have a faster speed rating as well. Um, but just in general, awesome. Okay, then we get to the ET12 Pro, which is fantastic if you're, if you're doing wired backhaul and you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigs because this is the only system that has two 2.5 gigabit ports. This one also happens to be the king of range. So uh, the GT6 was also very, very good for range. In fact, all of these were very good for range, but just knowing I've tested the ET12 back in the past at 350 feet, this thing, I remember the ET12 just being really, really good for range. Uh, but yeah, 
There you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Which one of these do you guys have? Which one of these do you guys are planning on getting? Um, how's your experience? I'm, I'm just genuinely curious. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.